Now time for members' statements. The member for Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. Since the government announced uh, the changes to autism treatment and services, the minister has asked us, what would you have me do to fix it? Well, many parents in Nickel Belt wanted me to share their ideas. Parents like Devin Crossgrove for their daughter, Audrey, and Mrs. Chantal Chartrand for her daughter, Valerie. These parents are invested in finding solutions because what the government has put forward is not a solution. It will hurt their children. It will hurt their family. They want funding based on the child's need. Laurie and Travis Allinger want the minister to know the improvement their son is making. Their son, Gavin, is turning six years old. He has severe autism and is mostly nonverbal. He has been receiving 27 hours a week of IBI therapy at school since January of 2018. He is now in the classroom for 50 percent of the day. His teachers write about the progress he has made in her classroom and how the changes announced by the government will make it impossible for Gavin to access the support that he needs and the deterioration of skills that will result. They tell me that they feel like the government is giving up on Gavin. Shannon Lavoie, four years old son, Theo, has autism. She says money should be allocated for therapy depending on severity of diagnostic and amount of intervention that the child needs. We agree. I hope the minister has the courage to accept the help and advice of these parents because children's lives and children's future are in the balance. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements. The member for Brantford Grant. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in the House today to pay tribute to the extraordinary dedication of Brant County Deputy Chief of Paramedics Randy Papel and his 40 years plus of service to our community. Randy can still remember his first call. He graduated from Conestoga College one day, and the following day he was eagerly working. As a paramedic, Randy was involved in responding to many local calls for assistance, as well as some large-scale emergencies, such as the Hagersville Tire Fire and the Mississauga train derailment evacuation. Of exceptional note, however, is the considerable and consistent volunteer efforts Randy has demonstrated both in promoting the paramedic services as well as supporting his local community. Randy volunteered as a firefighter for 20 years, raised funds across the province for numerous charities through running, biking, and joggling, running a marathon while juggling. Rising up the ranks over the years, Randy now feels that the Brant County Paramedic Service is in such a great spot that it was time for others to take the service forward. Wow. On behalf of the people of Brantford Brant and all of our first responders that hold a special place in all of our hearts, Thank you for 40 years of faithful service, Randy. Thank you indeed. Member statements. The member for Hamilton West, Ancaster Dundas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's with great sadness that I'm rising to bring attention to a very serious issue in Hamilton. This week, my colleagues from Hamilton, MPP Monique Taylor, MPP Paul Miller, and our leader, Andrea Horvath, met with the families of Jordan Hastings and Olivia Smozarski. Olivia and Jordan were 19-year-old best friends who died together when the vehicle that they were driving in crossed the grassy median of the Red Hill Valley Parkway and collided with a minivan. Mechanical issues, inattentive driving, intoxication and distraction were all ruled out as a cause. Theirs is not the only tragedy. In fact, there have been seven deaths and 668 crashes since 2012. We are calling for a judicial review of how safety concerns about the roadway were handled, including the initial lack of disclosure about the 2013 friction test. The angel parents that we met with said, we know that nothing will bring back our precious children. We just want to ensure that no family has to suffer what we have. A judicial review will ensure an independent and transparent process and get devastated families the answers that they deserve. To echo Andrea Horvath, it's time to do what should have been done at the first sign of substandard safety, get to work making the Red Hill Valley Parkway safe for everyone. Mr. Speaker, we cannot allow any more lives to be put at risk. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Perth, Wellington. Thank you, 
Speaker. Today I rise to recognize Taylor Weaver of Mount Forest. She recently completed her fifth and final season with the Laurentian Voyageurs women's hockey team at Laurentian University. Mm. As team captain, she demonstrated commitment and dedication both in the classroom and on the ice. Her hockey season is not over just quite yet. This past weekend, Taylor put on the Maple Leaf as a member of Canada's women's hockey team in the Winter Universiad. The Universiad is the world's largest university winter multi-sports competition. This March, Taylor and her teammates will hit the ice in Russia as they face off against student athletes on the international stage. Taylor earned her spot on the team through hard work and persistence. A dependable two-way forward, Taylor impressed Team Canada, the Team Canada Selection Committee, with her defensive skills and tenacity. Leading by example, she is known for her ability to block shots, win puck battles, and shut down opposing forwards. Given her selfless style of play, it is fitting that Taylor humbly credits the support of her parents, Scott and Lisa, we Lisa Weber, her coaches, and her teammates for her selection to Team Canada. Uh, I want to wish Taylor and her teammates all the best as they go for gold in Russia. Go Canada, go! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Member statements. The member for Brampton Centre. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. What an honour to rise here today to speak about an exciting initiative in Brampton. This week, I had the absolute pleasure of attending the 22nd annual Celebrity Chef Men Who Cook event hosted by the United Achievers Club at Century Gardens Recreation Centre in my riding of Brampton Centre. The United Achievers Club is a non-profit organization established in 1980 that seeks to raise the profile and consciousness of our Black and Caribbean communities, provide effective and meaningful mentorship opportunities for youth, and encourage greater participation in uh, our community and political affairs. I've had the opportunity to attend many of their wonderful events across Brampton, but by far my favourite is the annual Men Who Cook competition. Speaker, let me just say, these Brampton men threw down in the kitchen and the food was amazing. There were over 25 men who all cooked up a storm to raise funds for William Osler's pediatric sickle cell clinic at Brampton Civic Hospital. I'd like to acknowledge a few of these chefs, such as Greg Amoroso from the Peel Regional Police, Alex Batik, a local lawyer and mentor, Everton Dwight Campbell, a community leader and entrepreneur, Lester McDonald, who always brings the heat, Nicholas Stenton, owner and chef at Trinic Catering, Dale Williams, award-winning chef, cookbook author and creator of What in the Ross Hot Sauce. I could go on, but I'd like to thank all of the men who participated in this fantastic event. These men cooked up everything from rasta pasta, jerk chicken, crab cakes to chicken and waffles and a rock and roll banana split. I just have to say, Speaker, the food and the men were absolutely delicious. <laughs> Lastly, a special thank you to the organizers for hosting a wonderful event to bring our community together. Nothing like food to bring us together and celebrate. <laughs> Member statements. Member for Niagara West. Compete with that. Uh, last month, I had the opportunity of visiting Matthew House Hospice in Alliston, which offers caring and compassionate services for individuals, their loved ones, and caregivers who are taking a journey of a life-limiting illness or grieving loss. I was amazed by the warm atmosphere, the welcoming staff, and the overall quality of care they provide. It's remarkable how the surrounding community came together, donating time and resources to establish this wonderful home. And I was also happy to see that our government assisted the community effort by committing $1.2 million to support the construction costs for six residential hospice beds in their new facility. Everyone should have access to dignified end-of-life care, which respects the wishes of the patient and their loved ones, which is what I seek to accomplish with my private member's bill, Bill 3, the Compassionate Care Act. I was happy to also see our government invest nearly $33 million to build 193 new hospice beds across the province. With investment, investments like this, Speaker, we are ensuring that these patients are provided with the proper dignity, comfort, and the respect they deserve. I want to thank the staff at Matthews House for their incredible service, and I look forward to Ontario's government for the people, continuing to provide more people across the province with the compassionate hospice palliative care they deserve when nearing the end of their lives. Well thank you, Speaker. Member statements. The member for St. Catharines. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise to recognize the 90th anniversary for the Meriton Legion Branch 138, located in the riding of St. Catharines. The Legion originated due to the hard work of a group of Meriton veterans who wanted to create a branch in their own hometown. On January 10, 1929, Branch 138 received the charter from the Royal Canadian Legion Dominion Command to establish the Legion in Meriton. With his very first ever president, Mr. David Cameron, Meriton amalgamated in 1960 with the city of St. Catharines. However, it maintains a distinct community identity and spirit today. In fact, the HMCS Maritonian, a naval corvette ship that served during the World War II, was named after the Mariton, Mariton Ontario, in 1944. Branch 138 has served our local war her heroes and area residents, hosting weekly fish fries, darts every Sunday, tuning in steak jaws on Fridays, and I want to acknowledge longtime member Branch 138 in Mariton veterans Ernie Adams and Ed Botu, who can be seen in the Legion on a daily basis, participating in all Remembrance Day's activities. Current Branch President Trish Gander, who works together with Branch 138 and members, ensuring that all veterans and their families and Meritons are supported and taken care of. I am proud to be a longtime Meritonian. I'm proud to be a, Lem a Legion member in Meriton, and I would like to extend a happy 90th anniversary and invite all to the Mer Merton Legion Branch 138 on March 30th. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Oakville. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this afternoon, I have the pleasure of speaking about a noteworthy event taking place in my riding of Oakville tomorrow in celebration of International Women's Day. On International Women's Day, a date celebrated around the world, we pause in our daily lives to take the time to recognize and celebrate the advances of women in our society and acknowledge their achievements. I am reminded of our own country's history and the transformational change that has been brought about as a result of landmark judicial rulings such as the Persons case. Women have worked hard to earn their place in positions of influence in corporate Canada, cultural and educational institutions, and election to councils, legislatures, and parliaments across Canada. As the parents of four daughters, I know that I want to have the same opportunities in life as the boys do in their classes, and I'm thankful that in Canada my girls can aspire to and achieve anything they set their mind to. It is for this reason that my wife Najee and I are proud supporters of Plan International's Because I Am a Girl campaign to empower women and girls around the world. Tomorrow, on International Women's Day, I am honoured to attend an event in my riding with Minister responsible for women's issues, Lisa McLeod. The Zonta Club of Oakville will be hosting their annual dinner event tomorrow, March 5th. The date also marks Zonta International's 100th anniversary. The, the event will raise money for International Oakville Hospital Foundation, the Zonta Club of Oakville, and Zonta International, with funds used to help these organizations with operational costs as they help to make a difference in our communities. I am very excited to extend and would encourage all of my legislative colleagues how they might share in the recognition of women in our society on this International Women's Day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Peterborough, Kawartha. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to take this opportunity to speak about a trio of exceptional athletes from my riding of Peterborough, Kawartha. They'll be flying out later this week to represent Canada at the Special Olympic World Games being held in Abu Dhabi from March 14th to the 21st. Awesome. Brandon Van Sickle lives in Ennismore, and he's representing Canada in soccer. In addition to this, both of Brandon's parents are coaches with Special Olympics. Dylan Armstrong lives in the city of Peterborough and will be playing alongside Brandon on Canada's soccer team. Crystal Cochran will be representing Canada in 10-pin bowling. Crystal also hails from the city of Peterborough and competes nationally in both 10-pin and 5-pin bowling. 5-pin bowling is a Canadian game and it is not being represented this year at the World Games. I had the pleasure, Mr. Speaker, of speaking, of celebrating on February 24th, my birthday, with these three athletes and their families. They joined me at the Mount Community Centre. We had an ex excellent dinner put on by the Mount itself, and I learned a great deal about these three athletes. Brandon, actually, I've known for a number of years. He's been involved in special hockey for quite some time. 
All three of these athletes, it is their first time representing Canada on the national or international stage. And on behalf of the Ontario Legislature, I'd like to offer them our heartfelt, heartfelt thanks for their dedication to their respective sports. Crystal, Dylan, Brandon, you're an inspiration to everyone in Ontario. Thank you. That concludes our member statements for today. Reports by committees.